for an interactive film, you're supposed to get loud and rowdy and participate along with the film. Like say there will be a prompt where you're supposed to just go and take popcorn and throw it at the screen. The room is no different. Where they have a list of the number one things you're supposed to say and do at certain key points in the movie. Where the WSU men's basketball team improves to 4-1 and one on the young season after a win over CSUN 103-94. Yesterday marked the 15 year anniversary of Old Crimson. WSU alumni Tom Pound uh, began flying Old Crimson flag back in 2003 during an ESPN College Game Day broadcast from Austin, Texas. Others became inspired by Pound and dedicated themselves to making sure Old Crimson waved at every college game day. Game day is still yet to come to Pullman, but the flag remains, waving in celebration of the Cougs every Saturday. The 6th Annual Washington State Kids Carnival will take place at Beasley Coliseum on Monday, October 29th from 6 to 7 p.m. Activities at the carnival include trick-or-treating, games, and pictures with Butch. Well, as we get closer to Halloween, more jack-o'-lanterns begin to light up around campus. Reporter Jennifer Forsman shows us how some make their way home from the pumpkin patch. Now with College Game Day in town, the storyline for this week's game between WSU and the University of Oregon couldn't be simpler. This visit from College Game Day marks the very first time that the hit broadcast has graced the Palouse and the Cougar fans, and the team feels that they are ready to show the world what the Cougars are made of. With winter coming along the Palouse, fans of spring sports like baseball are forced to get a little creative if they want to stay with their favorite games. The Washington State University Student Entertainment Board hosted a showing of the 2003 movie The Room in an effort to try and win a free pre-screening of the new movie The Disaster Artist based on The Room. He came to me with um, the prompt from his old bosses actually so we got a really cool opportunity um, to kind of bring our, another aspect to films that I was really interested in. Interactive movies are not like normal movies. For a normal movie you're supposed to just go sit down and enjoy the film. For an interactive film, you're supposed to get loud and rowdy and participate along with the film. Like say there will be a prompt where you're supposed to just go and take popcorn and throw it at the screen. The room is no different, where they have a list of the number one things you're supposed to say and do at certain key points in the movie. Some of the prompts included throwing around footballs whenever the characters tossed around a football, throwing spoons at the screen when a picture of a spoon appears, and chanting when there is a panning shot of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's so subtle and so bad, you don't notice it, and it's so good, it makes you laugh. Like, it's almost uncomfortable to where it makes you laugh. <laughs> One of the schools competing in the contest is WSU rival University of Washington. However, they declined to comment on their showing of the film. We found out the reason why was that the rules for the contest state that you cannot talk about other schools in advertising and other mediums about the event. Alex Clark, Murrah News 8. Shoe boxes aren't normally a common sight at a church, but because of the work from Samaritan's Purse, a Christian organization, these boxes will make Christmas for millions overseas brighter. Here at Evangelical Free Church of the Palouse, many are gathered for Operation Christmas Child, a project which sends shoe boxes with gifts to kids overseas who may be less fortunate. This year we just had a lot more people who are leaders in the church getting excited about possibly replicating what we did last year with the students and just inviting everyone from the congregation to come. Each box is customized based on age and gender and then filled with toiletries, school supplies, and a few toys. Each is then prayed for and given a note made by the maker inside before it is sealed up and ready to go. This year alone, the church has made over a hundred boxes for people overseas, but that's only a small part of what they've done over their 10 year period. 2,500 to 3,000, I, I really don't have a count. The event was attended by Irina Creek, a national speaker for Operation Christmas Child, who was affected by the program when she was just 10 years old. My sister and I were taken to an orphanage um, when I was about four and a half years old. And, you know, I had some difficult times growing up, obviously, in uh, an orphanage in the former Soviet Union. But there was a bright time as well, which came when I was about 10 years old, when I received an Operation Christmas Child shoebox. And that was, I would say, a highlight of my childhood. Alex Clark, Moreau News 8.